Hello, welcome back to Banner Sushi Live Noting. In this episode, we're gonna do something simple. It's actually, I'm just gonna explore. There's a new node in Spreadshop. It's actually an update of an older node. It's called the Polyline Viewer. So this is the older version. This is the new version. And usually uh, for this developer, whenever he updated the node, he usually put MK1 or MK2. Uh, it's kind of like an idea, like a, so you know that there's a changes there. So this is the, this is obviously the older node and this is the newer node. And usually this will kind of have this MK1 and you can see the difference. And if you are, if you, you've been using the older node, you can simply update it to the newer node. Um, so that's nice. And you can see the newer one actually have control. Um, I think more control over the radius and also the twisting and also this uh, bevel bevel objects um, Polyline viewer is actually one of my favorite nodes It simply takes the vertices here. It doesn't have any edges connection because it's actually gonna be outputting um, curve curve objects, so let's take a look at it really quickly so this is a Polyline update 001 I always like when there's an update and then kind of read what's the improvement and kind of check it out. The easiest way to to give like a bunch of vertices is to use one of this uh, generator. But the one that I know is gonna work really well is the line because the line simply just gonna generate a bunch of points to to create a line and it's gonna work really well for us. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So seven points. We don't need to worry about the edges data. Simply plug in this thing into the polyline and we should get something that looks like a line. But this is actually a curve object. If you check it, this is a blender curve object. And you have control over um, a couple of parameters. That's uh, typically for you expect from a, from a curve. There's also a matrices to do the instancing, but there is, uh, as usual, we have the radius control. We have the twist control, which is nice. So we can twist the curve that way. I have not tested until today, actually. With the radius, of course, if we have, let's, let's make it 10 to make it easier. Let's say we have 10 points from line generator, it goes into polyline viewer, and we want to play around with the radius, we can use random number generator, that's the, the usual nodes that I use to test the uh, radius, so you can get this, uh, but check, whenever you are using generators like this, make sure you are actually outputting the right um, type of data. This one is integer, between 0 and 10, that's the default, and keep that in mind. Um, always you probably want to float instead of integer and kind of controlling the value that way as you can see it's very very easy now to do this um, for a curve and it's just this is I think really really powerful um, in fact of course you can always kind of connect this uh, the number into the random number for the radius and kind of grow the line that way so that's kind of neat I think you can randomize the seed of the random number for the radius the twist I have not played around with the twist but that, again uh, that can be interesting as well uh, and the bevel object I hardly use blender curve bevel objects but I think that's uh, can be really powerful uh, the bevel objects Bevel object is expecting a curve. Let me try to use a curve here. Just a, I think Bezier. So Bezier curve looks like that. Just some kind of a curve like that in the in the x axis. Let me try using that. So apparently this is what we get. So this is as if the curve is being lofted all along okay all along this uh, line okay that's interesting 
that's actually that's really really interesting i kind of didn't didn't expect that okay with random run uh, random number generator as you can see the number is changing a lot so you get this but if you use something that's a bit like um, vector noise you're gonna get a nicer kind of transition so use the line plug into the vector noise and the output you want it to be scalar plug that in there see that's a, a little bit nicer there's a smoother transition and what else can we do here perhaps uh, use a vector math to play with the scale this is just to ensure the transition is much much smoother along the line the transition of the of the noise actually and with the radius if you want like the like a value that's becoming like the default value you can simply um, add add it add a number into this guy see like if you say like 0 0.2 the minimum number will be 0 0.2 uh, with added noise and the noise itself actually I believe it's a value between 0 and 1 you see it doesn't have ne negative value so that's nice so you can have the default value and then this noise on top of it so more or less noise maybe less is better and remember this is already using the bevel object so it's looking like very nice it's a flat flat object but that means you can you can actually flatten this guy let me file top view gonna straighten this update it so we have like a like a ribbon like object and so you can twist it as well the twist the twist seems to work per per point basis so per point basis meaning if we actually use a range float and we assign a count here let's say we have 100 points now 100 points goes in there and we want to twist it so twist it a couple of times so now see we have this kind of twisting line very very nice uh, great job to the developer Zephy thanks thanks a lot for this it's very cool I really like this uh, this node already um, so we can randomize the noise of course um, random number generator might give you more interesting result but if, if you want something more subtle just use vector noise so the twist now being controlled and then the radius and you, you also have this bevel objects which is just a flat curve random number is uh, just for another yeah just for another thing let's save this first and let's continue tweaking so like I said all you need to provide for this uh, polyline viewer is just a bunch of points um, with the you kind of assume that the points is all in order in order to generate this um, currently we are just using a straight line but of course you can always plug in like uh, things like vector noise so line goes into vector noise is always something interesting so you get this random looking line but if you use scalar and kind of fix the line a little bit and then kind of make this larger you can start to see that it's generating more or less it's like a kind of like a scribble I did it I actually did this a couple of times in my live noting video just to show you that uh, this line line is actually um, the points being generated from lines is a uh, points that's kind of uh, keep growing in the x-axis so that's why when you plug this into a vector noise this automatically generate this kind of scribble scribble ribbon and this is really really nice actually uh, and 
you see here actually polyline viewer has extra other parameter like b spline and close b spline close actually is closing the the curve b spline currently is generating this funny things um, for the twist but maybe don't use don't use B-spline with close, but B-spline give you a smooth, smooth result. And the cap, uh, you can try the cap razor. Oh, actually, there is this radius. Okay, the radius doesn't work because we already use the bevel objects. But anyway, this is the the twisty result that we have now. We can randomize the seed, so this is nice, really, really nice. You get like a very fluid looking kind of scribbles. And if you render this out um, as a flat surface, um, kind of like for non uh, photorealistic render, I always do that so time to time, shadeless, and give it like a red color. And if you, if you render this out, perhaps uh, with a white background, You're gonna get something that looks very liquid, just like uh, like ink. It's really nice. Randomize the seed, update it. Very nice, just like a ribbon. So yeah, so the idea is of course just provide a points that's kind of in order into this polyline, and you're gonna get a result right away. Remember that you can use multiple or single. Single objects will join. If you have like a multiple curve, it will join it into a single object. While keeping it multi, will uh, will keep it like a multiple. And if you remember um, yesterday's uh, live noting, let me show you quickly. So yesterday I made this turtle random walk, and this is the geese. Okay, with the geese. Uh, Geese, you can the way you use this, you just grab the ID for the GIS and copy it, and you simply um, put it here. I'm gonna save this and make another node tree and gonna load that GIS, import, and just paste it here and then import it. You should get a node tree that generates the random walk. Okay, that's the random walk. Um, it's kind of generating this uh, random lines. I'm gonna show you quickly if we actually instead of having this just edges and points you can use polyline viewer and just simply plug in the points in there and you get this really nice looking um, like a 3d objects and you can turn on B spline and you can also use bevel bevel object if you want to kind of like a ribbon you can control the radius you can control the twisting so this is really cool I think uh, yeah like I said random number if you know the number of points you can use random random number so we have 100 uh, 915 points let's reduce that And with random number, plug it into the radius and just randomize the radius and we get something that looks like a little bit like intestines, I guess. So, you know, like something like that. Uh, smooth, multi. The funny thing about this uh, turtle is I have another setup where instead of having a single turtle I have a multiple turtles and so I have I can get I can easily generate bunch of curve at the same time using spreadshop yeah so this is a uh, how many let's say, let's say if I make like 300 of this 300 times 3 turtle actually it's gonna be a lot but I simply plug in uh, the turtles like multiple turtle generators into the polyline viewer and this is what I got and each of the objects is a separate curve object I can give it a different material 
So yeah, this is the final result. Um, and basically, this is just a simple tweak of this uh, turtle random walk and and the polyline viewer. So yeah, I guess this is really really powerful. Uh, sometimes the result is a bit a surprise as well for me. How can you get this kind of complex thing with just a simple setup and uh, using Square Chalk, for example? Yeah, so this is just one example. Like I said, it's a simple random walk uh, in 3D um, plug into the polyline. But yeah, thanks to the polyline, we get this, uh, we can easily create this kind of curve. And here, I, I'm not, I haven't even randomized the, the radius. It's already looking quite nice, very detailed work. And it's quite fast as well. I think polyline viewer MK1 is actually really fast. So uh, that's pretty much it for this live noting video. Uh, hopefully you enjoy this and find this useful. If you have any comment, suggestion, any feedback, let me know in the comment section below. Just uh, let me know what you think and I'll see you in the next video.